Hello everyone and welcome back to Arch Cover Zantos Part 2. Here is the list of colors that I'm using on Part 2. Let's continue where we left off. So, saddle pad, pull arm grip and sore grip. For that I'm using corn red as a base color. And start applying it in all these areas. Now I'm applying a wash, Noon Oil, in all the previously painted areas. Once the Noon Oil Wash is completely dry, I am using now again Corn Red, but this time with a dry brush and just dry brushing the saddle pad just to get a nicer transition. Once the dry brushing is done, I'm using Wasdaka Red now to start layer all the areas, the raised surfaces of the saddle pad, also the polearm grip and the sword grip as well. The saddle pad, I use Kislev Flash as a highlight, don't need too much, only in the sharpest features and raised areas of the cloth.
and on the polar and sword handle I use Gorthor Brown as a highlight. The first color I use is Lad Belcher and with this color I base paint the shield handle. I am using now Nuln Oil Wash and start applying it on the shield handle and I am also applying just a touch in each of every peg on the armor plates. Once the Noin oil wash is completely dry, I am using Stormhold Silver as a highlight on the shield handle and also I apply it on the pegs so they are popping out really nicely.
for the sword sheath I'm using iron knock skin as a base color now where I painted previously which you can find it in part one obviously I'm trying to be as neat as possible The next color I'm using is Reichland Flash Shade Wash and applying it on the Iron Rock skin areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Deepkin Flash as a highlight. Don't need too much, mainly just in the sharpest features on the sheath. And with Rhinox Hide, I base paint all the straps on the sheet. I am using now Balthazar Gold for all the gold details. At this stage I decided to assemble the miniature except the sword sheath because I felt all the details that are difficult to reach are already painted. However, it was a bold idea as the miniature is now much heavier and I had a bit more difficult to handle it. Now I'm not saying it is not possible, however if you are still unsure about your skills, I highly recommend to leave the miniature subassembled. For the assemble I use super glue, making sure to use just a tiny amount, otherwise it ruins the painted area once it's dry. Now I'm using Agrax Earthshade Wash and I am applying it in all the areas where I previously painted with Balthazar Gold.
Once the Agrax Earth Shield is completely dry, then I'm using Retributor Armor as a highlight and start highlighting all these areas. The first color I'm using is Abaddon Black as a base paint and start covering all the gems, also the shield emblem on the armor emblems as well and the pole arm. using Dawnstone as a highlight in all the Abaddon Black areas. using Administratum Grey as a fine highlight on the small gems, just a tiny dot in the center. The bigger gem mainly from the top to get a nice highlight. And the pole arm to make it a bit more sharper in all the edges.
the gems are almost complete so now I can use white scar for the rooms I water it down quite heavily so just to flow inside into the runes it is a good thing because if you may over go with it as you can see I'm just removing the excess with my fingers so that the white paint stays inside the deepest recesses Once the white scar is completely dry, I am using Weight Watcher Green Glaze, applying it in all the areas where I applied the white scar. Now I am doing the same technique using white scar with heavily watered down and applying it again trying to apply less now this point because I still want to show all the green shades and finishing it with Lamenter's yellow so with that, that yellowish greenish glow in the runes can be shown I use white scar on the eyes so just a few dot I am using mortar and green clear paint on the eyes because I want to give that glow in the dark effect given that the eyes are in the shade of the helmet Alternatively, you can use Way Watcher Green Glaze, uh, Bialtan Green, also Mood Green can work as well. Now the only thing is left is to seal the gems and I'm using art code for this As in part 1 video shown in the beginning, the column and the spirit is base painted with Dawnstone. So the first color I'm using is a wash noon oil and applying it on the column.
Once the Numen oil wash is completely dry, then I'm applying Agrax Earthshade wash, just to give it a bit more definition. And finishing it with Karak Stone and just dry brushing the column. Now I can move on to the spirit, so I base paint the spirit with Celestial Grey. With Abaddon Black, I base paint the gem that the spirit is holding. I am now using Niolite Oxide and I'm applying it on all the Celestial Grey areas where the Celestial Grey meets with the Abaddon Black just a touch around it so that to have that glowing ghosty effect Once the Nylac Oxide is completely dry, I am using a Lamia Medium mixed with Collier Green Shade 3 to 1 ratio and applying it in all the Nylac Oxide areas. Once it's dry, I'm applying Otho and Grey, mainly with a dry brush, focusing on the edges and the finishes of the miniature. Using Waywatcher Green Glaze, I apply it in some random areas on the spirit, mainly where are the deepest recesses, so just to get a bit better definition.
I do an edge highlight on the gem with Cabo Light Green. And finishing it with cyberite green of fine highlight just in the sharpest corners just to make it more pop out I use Astro Granite texture for the base. So I have the base separate from the model. I'm applying it on all the surface. And once I'm aware of where the spirit host and the feet are gonna be meeting, while it's still wet, I'm just moving out some of the areas with the, this tiny equipment tool to make it as flat as possible where I'm gonna be gluing the miniature. Once it's dry, the Astro Granite, which is up to 8 hours even, I'm applying Null Oil Wash in all the surfaces. At this stage I also place some random rocks on the base. Once it's completely dry, then I'm applying Mechanical Standard Grey with a dry brush. The first one can go quite heavily. After that, I'm applying with Dawnstone, same technique, a bit lighter way. And finishing it with Administratum Grey, just a tiny amount on the base to get that nice definition. I use Agrax Earthshade on all the rocks. And I decided to use Karak Stone so that all these rocks can be even like ruins, pieces, like fell off from the column, so that to match the two together. Now I'm applying more time turf and at this stage I also added some skulls which I painted in the exact same way as in part 1 for Kavalos' body. So I'm applying all these turfs. I am using now Abaddon Black 
and just base paint all the rim of the base. And with this last step, the miniature is complete. And here you have it, Arch Cavalus Xanthus is ready for purifying Shish by eradicating all the living things within it. If you enjoy my videos, subscribe to my channel, leave a like if you find the video useful and also click on the bell if you want to be notified for new videos. Check out my other social media pages and my Patreon page, I will leave the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, cheers!